I was very happy to find out that there is a way, a specific way, to get a business credit card without using personal credit. And today I'm going to share this with you. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Story Q Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you are to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee, RT, or vodka, and let's roll. In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about how to get a business credit card without using personal credit. If you're launching a new business, you're likely going to need some funds in the form of credit, whether it is a business loan or a business credit card or some kind of business financing. But if your personal credit score makes you a grown, you really want to find alternative ways to get the funding you need, right? So one thing that's very important is that if you want to get a business credit card, you have to go through a lengthy application process that's pretty similar to the one required on most consumer credit cards. You have to provide some information about your business, the name, contact information, sector, for example. But the gist is the same. And one of the more interesting similarities is that even though you may be applying on behalf of a business, you are generally required to deal with a hard inquiry on your personal credit history. And this is really just uh, the requirements you really need to, they have to, the lenders have to go through, they have to do a hard pull. So they have to actually access your personal credit to give you a business credit card. And what's more, you will nearly always have to provide a personal guarantee that acknowledges that you have a personal liability for your business's credit card debts. And this can be a problem if you are intent on keeping personal and business finances separate, right? And so one thing I want to do it, I want to do here is that I'm going to show you a methodology that will help you actually get a business credit card without using personal credit and a person and a personal guarantee. But you have to follow those, uh, you have to follow the, the steps very methodically because this is very important. You have to understand as a business owner with bad credit or low credit or no credit, you are seen, your application is seen by a lender as very risky. And a lender is in the business, a credit card issuer or a lender in general is in the business of managing risk. So they have to actually uh, cover their butt also. And they're looking at you, they're looking at your application, they're thinking, wow. This is a big, this is a big risk. So we need to cover that. So for you to actually uh, prevent your uh, credit score, your personal credit score from, uh, you know, stopping you from getting the business credit card, you have to follow a methodology. And here it is. So step number one, you need to build your business's credit. This is very important. The only real way to avoid having your personal credit in the business financing picture is to start thinking about building up the credit of the business itself, right? Because the whole idea is to separate. You want to segregate your business finances from your personal finances. So you got to start building your business's credit with a healthy business credit profile to reference. Lenders will have less need to pull your personal credit to make financial financing decisions. In other words, what you're doing here is you are putting forward. The, your EIN, your employer identification number, as opposed to using your social security number to apply for a business credit, to, to, for a business credit card, all right? This is very important. Now, although things get more complex as your company grows, at its most basic, business credit is, la is a lot like uh, consumer credit. In other words, business credit is used by lenders to determine the credit risk represented by your business. In other words, whether your business is likely to repay its debts, right? This is clear enough. And uh, so the thing here is that you, there are several agencies, several credit bureaus, that is, that really take care of um, evaluating a, a company's uh, credit over time. So uh, the, you have, well, there are three major ones. We have uh, Dun & Bradstreet, DMB, Experian, and Equifax. And unlike consumer credit, there is no industry-wide credit scoring model. Instead, each specific bureau will have its own internal formula for determining a business credit score. But it, it, it 
traditionally ranges from 0 to 100. And there are important factors that will likely affect your business's credit score regardless of the individual bureau. For example, based on our analysis, Experian and Dun & Bradstreet look at a number of factors, including your outstanding, your company's outstanding balances, the number of trade experiences, payment habits, credit utilization, trains over time, public record recency, frequency and dollar amount, demographics, so years on file, the business size. They also pay attention to what I call microeconomics. In other words, what are the economics in the sector? What's really going on? Are, is, is this a healthy sector? Is, it, is this a, uh, an industry that has been uh, experiencing growth in the past, say, two, three, four, five years, right? So they kind of look at that. And of course, they have to pay attention to the macro economy, so the micro and the macro. Step number two, so to get a business credit card without using personal credit first, build your business's credit. Step number two, you want to establish a banking relationship. Now, you will be asking me, why am I giving you uh, ad advice on building a banking relationship if we are, are just talking about a business credit card? Well, guess what? A lot of big banks, national, a lot of big national banks are also credit card issuers. So if you if you are talking about Let's say JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Citibank, Capital One. All those biggies are also biggies. They are biggies not only in banking, they're also big in business banking, that is, but also biggies in uh, business credit card issuance, right? So you want to establish a banking relationship. And the way we, we've seen this, based on our, our analysis, you can establish a banking relationship three ways. Number one, you can establish a banking relationship with uh, a local financial institution so this could be a, a look, um, credit union or a traditional bank right doesn't matter now guess what credit union also in some cases may issue business credit cards so if you are in good terms with uh, the local financial institution if they know you they, they have a some kind of history with you they've seen the transactions going on in your personal account and your bank account in your business bank account, they might be willing to actually uh, issue you a business credit card without using personal credit. So that's the first tier of the trifecta. So you have local financial institution. You can also reach out to a national financial institution, a national credit card issuer, such as JP Morgan, where I said this, I said this before, you have Citibank, you have uh, Wells Fargo. You have uh, American Express, not really a traditional bank, but also a credit, a, ma a major credit card issuer. So the whole idea here is to start having a relationship with those issuers. You can have, you can start by having either a bank account or a personal credit card with them, and then you can transfer. You can parlay the positivity you have had with uh, at the personal level. You can parlay that positivity into a business relationship by getting a business credit card. The third tier of the trifecta is to establish a banking relationship with all those online banks and those are the new uh, th those constitute the new wave of uh, banking institutions that only operates online they are internet internet only banks and those are pretty cool too i'm talking about i'm thinking about ally right ally invest you have a lot of them you have um uh, i'm blanking here but you do have a series of uh, banking institutions that only operate online and you might want to try them too. You might be lucky there. I'll be right back, but after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweaty Kiwi Show. I'm still talking to you about how to get a business credit card without using personal credit. The whole idea is to segregate your personal finances from your business finances. So step number one, I showed you that you need to how, to, how to build your business's credit. Step number two, you need to establish a banking relationship. Step number three, you need to find a qualified co-signer. Now, unfortunately, build, building business credit can be a slow process. It takes time. And sometimes it takes years to fully establish. So if you don't wanna wait for your business to have its own credit or simply can't make it happen, your personal credit comes back into the financing picture, right? 
On the positive side though, you can take steps to minimize how much influence your own credit score has on uh, your company's ability to get a business credit card. And all you have to do is to apply with a qualified co-signer. Now, if you are lucky that you have a uh, in the co-founder team, you are not alone. In other words, this is not a solopreneur enterprise. You you have other co-founders. You can actually, and you, and if you are lucky enough to have a, a co-founder with stellar um, credit within the team, you might want to actually uh, rely on that person to to beef up the quality, the credit worthiness of the business credit card application. Okay, this is very important and uh, different from an authorized user. Co-signers act as a security for the credit line, essentially putting their own good credit, they put it up as collateral, and they guarantee that the creditor will get its money back one way or another. With a qualified co-signer, you may be approved by for many of the best business credit cards, including top-rated picks. And one thing that's very important to remember here is that before you ring your good credit friends or neighbors, however, it's important to understand the risks associated with being a credit card co-signer. Co-signers, also called um, also called guarantors, are taking they're taking a big responsibility here. They are taking on the responsibility for any debt the primary cardholder accrues, and those co-signers will be able will be liable for the debt should the primary business cardholder be unable or sim simply choose not to repay the debt. So if you are listening to me, whether you are seeking a co-signer or you are thinking about being a co-signer yourself, th there are certain uh, risks that you need to be aware of. And co-signers who don't pay can be subject to legal action by the creditor, the same as, as, a co uh, as the uh, original co-holder. And co-signers may even end up on the annoying end of collection calls should the debt progress that far. So this is kind of important. You really want to you want to, I'm just laying out the foundation of the co-signer and signer relationship that you need to uh, you need to clarify before you get into uh, this uh, kind of uh, agreement. And there's also the small fact that the co-signer's personal credit will be tied to the card. This means that the, that any late or missed payments made by the primary cardholder can negatively impact the co-signer's credit as well. And should the primary cardholder default on the credit, the co-signer's credit will take on nearly as much damage as the cardholder themselves it's very important step number four if you want to get a business credit card without using personal credit whether because you have no credit or you have bad credit or fair credit consider applying for a secured business card yeah I know you might be thinking this this is annoying because you have to put up some cash or whatever but guess what the whole idea here is to start little to have a secure credit card with 1000 or 5000 just kind of post some collateral and uh, after 6 months if you ha if you can establish a positive pattern of uh, payments the business card the business credit card issuer may actually um, upgrade the uh, the card this is very important right so this is an this is in another parallel with the consumer credit world. So if you lack business credit, you can turn to a secured business credit card for revolving financing. And secured credit cards are actually secured by a cash deposit, which which lives in a protected savings account. So if you default on your credit card debt, the bank can close your account and use your deposit to cover your outstanding debt. And since secured credit cards present very little actual uh, financial risk to creditors. Your business or personal credit will typically have little impact on your ability to qualify. And it also makes secure business credit cards a good way to start building um, business credit, right? Particularly because most secure business credit card credit cards, they have a relatively low annual fees, often less than 50 or 40 bucks, okay? And the main point to understand about secured business credit card is that your available credit limit will wholly rely on the size of your deposit. Very important. Let me give you an example. The, uh, the BBVA business secured visa requires a minimum deposit of $500 and will provide a credit line equal to 90% of the deposit. The Wells Fargo business secured card accepts deposits from $500 to $25,000 and they provide a credit line equal to the deposit amount. Okay. So while the BBVA and, and Wells Fargo cards are the most popular options for ma from major banks, you can often often find 
quality credit cards options at small regional banks and local credit unions as well. I think I've said that before. It's all about, it, it all harks back to my comment about establishing long-standing, positive, mutually beneficial relationships with financial institutions, either at the local level, at the national level, or on the internet. So this is kind of important. And another factor that makes secure business credit cards a good way to build a business credit is that you may be able to upgrade your secured card to an unsecured card after responsible use over time. And while there is no set time frame in which you should expect an upgrade, maintaining your account in good standing, such as making on time or early payments, is the best way to ensure you will be eligible for an upgrade when the time comes. So step number five, folks, I'm still having a convo with you about how to get a business credit card without using personal credit. So number one, build your business's credit. Number two, you want to establish a banking relationship. Number three, you want to find a qualified co-signer. Number four, you want to apply for a secured business card. And number five, you want to consider alternative business credit cards. Let's talk about that. There are actually a few of them that I want to, I want to familiarize your, yourself with. And um, you have uh, the, the Brex Daily cards. You have the Stripe corporate cards the Bremex Visa, the Bremex Bank Visa Signature Business Company card, and you have, um, you also have um, the Scale Factor Visa Charge card. So when we're talking about alternative business cards, we're talking about corporate cards or business cards, all right? Let's first talk about the, the Brex Daily card. The Brex Daily card stands out from the crowd. It's a flexible business card that is not co-branded with a retailer. So if you meet the requirements, you can use it anywhere. MasterCard is accepted. In addition, you can choose from three excellent rewards program, uh, rewards programs, whichever would work best for you. And there is a wide variety of credits and discounts for a host of services your business might find useful. Okay, so the key features here are it's not available to sole proprietorships, unregistered businesses, and other non-individual liability companies. There is no annual fee. The rewards, you can choose from tech rewards, life sciences rewards, or remote workforce rewards. And the perks credits for various services including uh, about uh, five thousand dollars for zendesk and five thousand dollars for amazon web services you have discounts for other services including WeWork and salesforce and you have virtual cards for online transactions so this is pretty cool and uh, then you have the strap corporate card and this is a lot like uh, the breast card that we just that i just spoke about it's a charge card though in other words it's it's a it, you have to pay it off monthly with a flexible rewards program and available benefits it's also available without a personal guarantee and there is no credit inquiry involved but as an, as is the case with uh, the, the breast card this is not necessarily an easy card to get so it's available by invitation only but you can get a you, you can request an invite and not much of an of, a, of an obstacle though you don't even have to use stripe for payments to qualify the real challenge comes in meeting Stripe's standards whether you'll be approved for the card depends on several variables, including payments volume, history with Stripe, bank account history. Okay, and uh, there's no annual fee. The rewards: two percent cash back in your top two spending categories each month, out of several options. One percent cash back on all other purchases. There is no introductory offer. The perks: as I said, you have uh, credits on Amazon Web Services, and you have also Zendesk. And uh, you can actually, uh, there, is, there are no clear cut requirements. Approval is depending on your business's payment volume, history with Stripe, and bank account history. The other two alternative business cards I want you to consider are the Bremer Bank Visa Signature Business Company card and the, uh, the Skill Factor Visa Charge card. Let's first talk about the Bremer Bank Visa Signature Business Company card. This is basically the only true business credit card that's available with no personal guarantee and is not classified as a corporate card. It still targets medium to large businesses, however, and, and it has high income and revenue requirements. Cardholders enjoy access to a free rewards programs, a rewards program when using the card. So the, the key features here, annual fee, zero dollar. You have free rewards programs available. Requirements, at least $1 million in annual revenue and 350,000 in net annual income for at least the past two years. So you can see here that the target audience is medium to large businesses. 
0% intro rate for purchases and balance transfers for 15 billing cycles, then your rates will be somewhere between 13% to 22% variable. And you gotta visit a, Br a Bremer Bank location to apply for this card and free employee card for in with individual spending limits. Protection against terminated employees misuse up to 100,000 and you can get your, your company name embossed on your card. There is uh, no annual fee, but a 3% foreign transaction fee. Now let's talk about the scale factor Visa charge card. This actually, um, this was, uh, this card was fully integrated. It is actually fully integrated into scale factors accounting software and only available to its customers. And the card was developed to help small business owners clean up the expense management process and users can easily issue physical, digital, and temporary cards with preset spending limits and expiration dates, and each card can be frozen or canceled anytime. And the cool thing here is that you can uh, apply for this business charge card once you have connected your business bank accounts and accounting file to Scale Factor. So this is a way for Scale Factor to get new customers, right? And and um, I need to say that the application process has no impact on your personal credit the credit score, and it requires no personal guarantee. An annual fee is $0, rewards 1% cashback on all purchases. You have an expense management tool, so virtual cards with customizable expiration dates and spending limits, mobile expense upload and verification. In terms of requirements, applicants must be scale factor customers who have a connected business bank accounts and accounting files to scale factor. And uh, this is a charge card, of course, so the balance must be paid in full monthly. 1% cashback on all purchases. You can set spending limits on employee cards. Employees can upload expenses and receipts for mobile. You can easily issue uh, physical, digital, or temporary employee cards. You have the ability to freeze and cancel cards with the, with the touch of a button. And the cool thing again is uh, there's no annual fee. So folks, what's the takeaway? So today I, I explained to you basically how to get a business credit card without using personal credit. As uh, any new business owner quickly learns, starting a business is very easy, right? <laughs> Making one prosper is another matter entirely. So from managing employees to uh, coral and chickens, running a business requires a lot of uh, flock, flock and hard work, really. Now, the thing here is that while a healthy business credit profile can go a long way toward easing the, fun the, the funding strain, it can be hard to establish, especially if your own credit needs a lot of work. Of course, where there is a will, as my mother says, there is often a way. So with a co-signer, secure card, or a little relationship elbow grease, you may find the business credit card you need to keep your business and your uh, flock going strong. So in today's conversation, I give you five steps, five very easy steps that you can actually implement today to get a business credit card without using personal credit. First, you want to build your business's credit. Number two, establish a banking relationship. Number three, you want to find a qualified co-signer. Number four, you want to apply for a secured business card. Number five, you want to consider alternative business cards such as a scale factor visa charge card, the Bremer Bank visa signature business company card, the Strap corporate card, and the Brex daily card. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>